Welcome all of us. Completed his BE Civil and Structural Engineering in Annamalai University, Chidambaram in 1989. He has completed ME Structural Engineering in same university in 1992. He has completed his PhD in Anna University, Chennai in 2002. He has five years of working experience as senior engineer in Enmas Product Process Technologies Limited, Chennai. And he has 17 years of teaching, research, testing, and consultancy experience in CEG Gendi, Anna University, Chennai, and working with Trinom. He has published 11 international and 11 national journals. He has attended 8 international and 31 national conferences. He has given 2 international and 4 national seminars and organized various training programs. He is being member of 8 professional bodies. He has published various books also. Anna University has awarded an active consultant award in the year 2012 for his contribution in the consultancy work. Now our HOD, Dr. E.B. Perumal sir will address our chief guest. In fact, you know, he is quite busy with all his academic activities. He is in charge of various portfolios in Anna University. So in spite of his busy schedule, and we requested him to be with us to share his experiences regarding the earthquake rest structures. He readily accepted. So we express our hearty thanks to you. So thanks for accepting our invitation. And really we are very lucky to have him with us. That he has very good interaction with many field engineers and uh, normally we used to arrange many training programs also for field engineers and definitely this experience will be of very much useful to all of us here and uh, request each and every one of you to attend the session effectively and make use of uh, the deliberations. At the end, whatever doubts you have, you can clarify. So definitely this session is going to be a very, very useful session for all of us. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Bob and others and my dear student friends. Very good morning to all of you. Good morning. I am extremely happy to associate myself with the one day training program, particularly on the topic earthquake resistant design of structures. Probably we all know that so far when you talk about a, the structural design. We normally we do the design of structures, very many structures, starting with the simple residential building and then multi-story buildings and then you can call it as many other industrial structures or power plant structures and nuclear plant structures. The role of the civil engineer are very very important because not only in the planning stage, we do planning, then we do the analysis and design and then we are going to do the construction till handing over the building that time the civil engineer uh, civil engineers responsibilities are more and we are associated with that once the building is ready and then making all the arrangements and then uh, including AC and other things fixing everything is ready the first person get out of the building is civil engineer where all other your uh, engineers like computer science and other people are going to occupy that building but in the design. Normally, we design the structure for various loading. Normally, you can call it as there are two categories. The first category is the gravity load. Probably, you are designing the building for dead load and the light load. This is a normal loading. Then, we are going to design these buildings also for the other type of loadings that is called wind loading and then Earthquake load. Now, so far, if you look at 1980 and 1990s and all, even though our buildings are very, very, it's not that much tall when compared to the, the present day contest. Okay. Now, if we are talking about the building, even in Chennai, now the height of the building, if you look at that building, 30 story building, almost 100 meters. The building height is almost 100 meters. People are trying to construct more height also. 150 meters to 200 meters. But if you look at the Western countries, the other countries, the building heights are not measured in meters. It's all measured in kilometers. You know that. 
the building heights are 0.5 km, 0.5 km, 1 km. Suppose you look at, look at the Burj Khalifa, almost it's yeah, about a kilometer height. 0.7 Okay. So, like that, the people have started to think that. Now, why I am talking about in kilometer and meters, even though, if you know that, the population okay, of the other countries are much low when compared to countries like India. Okay, so we are the second largest. Okay, so we are going to, only we are going to supersede in population. Okay, very soon we are going to beat the China. Okay, China is not only in the technology uh, giant. Okay, so we Indians, we are not, we are going to supersede them, not in other techniques, at least in population in the near future. Okay, so in this context, now when you look at the buildings, Whatever we are doing the design in the 80s and 90s at all, we do only, we consider the design only for gravity loading, that is data drive load. In the recent contest, after the occurrence of the Guji earthquake, probably you all know, I am going to start with a very, very, uh, 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 very fundamental and then we are going to do whatever your level, even though this is a slightly uh, uh, complex or complicated in nature, it involves the dynamics of the particular structures, okay, but still we are not going to look at the, all the basics of the dynamic equilibrium equation and how to do that, etc. But practically as a civil engineers, what are the things we can contribute, so those areas I am going to focus on that, okay. So we need not worry about the regular classroom, okay, first of all, you feel free Together, we are going to learn and we are going to interact and then we are going to share our ideas. Okay, it's a both side contribution. It's not only, even somebody told to put Khalifa height, okay, corrected me. I talked about kilometer he gave with the exact numbers. So it's going to be an interaction between all of us. We are going to interact with each other and then we are going to discuss on various issues and if the problem comes, how to overcome that. So, it is not a regular classroom. Okay, so don't feel that the classroom and teacher only has to teach or he has to only talk and then the students have to listen. Don't do that. Whenever you are feel free, if you want to have an interaction, you please raise your hands, we will discuss on that and then we can proceed further. Okay. So today the basic no earthquake is very very important because after the occurrence of the Buji earthquake, so the Indian no, seismic zones already devised and then the southern peninsula of India so far whatever we are assumed that the southern peninsula of India is safe against the earthquake it is not going to be so so far we are assuming that the no earthquake will not occur in India okay particularly in the southern part earthquake will not occur but already so far we learned or we heard earthquake only in Peppers are the news, TV news as only. But the after the occurrence of the Abuja earthquake, and also you know that there is occurrence of the earthquake in Pondicherry. Okay? So we already felt that there is earthquake shaking. I think yeah. how many of you already experienced, probably you might be in the 6th standard or 7th standard. Okay, that time you already experienced. So far, we know that earthquake means in some other country it's occurred. So, this much magnitude, that much magnitude, we are not bothered about that. Okay, we are not bothered about what happens. But uh, because the earthquake will not occur in our country, particularly in the southern region. But the situations are different, the conditions are different. Okay, so the plates are started moving. So, because of that, we are going to get a very, very major or serious earthquake, particularly in Chennai cities. That's what the uh, geological report says that uh, any time a major earthquake can occur in the southern part, particularly in Chennai. Similarly, <coughs> one uh, fault is a very, very active fault, that is in Coimbatore, and then uh, it's close up to Bangalore. So, we have to be very careful whenever we are designing it, but now what we are doing it, we are considering many high-risk buildings without, without considering the earthquake. If you just have a, if you refer the newspaper that they are around 4-5 four, four years back after the occurrence of earthquake at Puja, so most of the builders have started advertising our buildings are designed for seismic loading. 
red color. You can look at the Hindu or uh, some other times of India proper press column. They will advertise that our beliefs are designed for earthquake boring. So only three factors considered. But you look at this week or last week paper, there is no advertisement like that. Okay. So and we particularly the southern part people, so whatever the history we easily we are not going to remember and then we carry forward our work. For example, tsunami. So today we are, we are not talking about anybody nobody talks about tsunami. But after when they were attacking the tsunami, tsunami, everybody talks about tsunami, tsunami resistance and then tsunami warning systems, so many things. But today nobody talks about anything. Okay? Similarly, flood last December, very serious about the flood, but this December is going to come. We are all <laughs> very quiet and then we are doing our routine only. We are not even thinking of what we should do, what are the precautions we have to take, that we are not worrying. So that is very, very important. Go to the next slide. Now we talk about today, particularly the earthquake uh, resistant design of various structural elements. Very, very fundamental. Now I am going to give you a fundamental basic knowledge. There is a no prerequisite is not required for the particular lecture. Okay, whereas some of the lecture you need some prerequisite knowledge of dynamics. That is not at all required. So all these things are very basic one only. Okay. So what is seismic waves? So probably the plates are started moving. Probably you have very many plates are there. Seven plates are there. So Australian plate is there. So many plates are there. So probably the earth. Okay. So the earth. So everything is like a small small plates. And then the plates are started moving. Okay, that's why you know that Himalayas again they keep on rising. Okay, so the southern part is moving towards the northern part, and then again the north you are going to get very serious earthquake, or quite often you are going to get the earthquake. So whenever the earthquake occurs, what happens? It releases the large amount of strain energy. So the energy is released. Okay, so because of that, so it is going to be vibrating, and then it creates the waves. Okay, it creates the waves in all the direction through the earth layer. So the entire, if you look at the slide, so probably you have to take where is the, the fall rupture. You can look at that the fall rupture here. And then whenever the fall ruptures, wherever the weak plane, the seismic waves are going to travel on that plane and then it reaches the ground level. And then whenever the ground level, you look at that, this is not the waves are not traveling here. The waves are traveling like this, the weakest plane. And then whatever the buildings are there, so it is going to affect that building. The building is going to vibrate or it is going to shake. Okay, it introduces shaking. So because of the shaking, what will happen? The structure is, is going to collapse. And the just uh, whenever you design, just uh, uh, yeah, very very brief, I want to just tell you the maximum seconds, whatever you have to it is only a few seconds. Three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. That's all. Okay. So you don't think about a one hour earthquake. <laughs> okay. So whatever the earthquake is only a few seconds only. Five seconds, ten seconds. Okay, that itself here causes a very, very serious damages. Okay, the five seconds or ten seconds shaking, it causes the yeah, very, very serious damages. And then the various waves are whatever the waves created because of the seismic waves, you have a P wave. And then we have a S waves, and then we have a low waves, and then we have a rally waves. Because of these waves are moving, okay. So probably you know that whenever you have a P wave, P wave moving, yeah, it's a pull or push. Okay, the wave P wave is there. Wave causes the either push or pull on the earth crust. So similarly, you have a surface wave, it's going to be side to side are there, and then you have a low wave, it's going to both you going to um, compress as well as the shear. Similarly, the Rayleigh wave are also in the elliptic in wave plane. So this is your basic thing. Next slide. Now, how we are going to instrument, that is very, very important. Okay. So the instrument, whatever you are going to use is called a seismograph. Okay. So it has got uh, three components. One is sensor, another one is recorder and time. Okay. And then if you look at the plot here, okay. This plot, this is the instrument is going to measure whenever the ground is shaking like that. So you have a frame and then a pendulum is mounted on that with a pen. So whenever the is going to shake, so it is going to 
just strip on the paper whatever is provided so then you are going to get what is going to be your wave okay so these things are called as earthquake signatures like our signature so that is called as earthquake signature okay so this is what you are going to have so you can look at that so the magnitudes are going to be amplitude is going to vary for a different type of earthquake and then the components are going to vary depends upon its direction okay so generally the instrument which is used for recording the earthquake is called seismograph and then whatever the graph you are going to get that is going to be your earthquake signature this earthquake signature are the loads probably you know that so what is this earthquake signature okay earthquake signatures are going to be nothing but loads acting on the structure probably you might have studied in a structural analysis almost all of you are in sixth semester so you are completed the okay so probably the structural analysis in the structural analysis you might have solved the problem okay you have very many loads and then what you will do there all the loads are there what normally you will do in structural analysis generally you are studying the subject structural analysis So you calculate. You are going to array what are the bending moments and shear force acting on the various sections of the structure. Okay, for the applied loading. In addition to that, you are going to know the you know the slope and deflection. Very good. You are going to know the what is the slope of the structure, what is the deformation of the structure. Okay. You may have done one more problem, advanced problem. The structural analysis to the settlement of supports. Okay, probably are you familiar with the settlement of support? One support sinks by say one mm or two mm. So what is going to be the additional moment cost on the structure? Okay. So first case you just compare these two cases. The first case you apply the loading and then you are going to measure what are the slopes and deflection. In the second case what you are going to do you are going to apply the deformation. You are going to apply the deformation. due to the deformation what is the corresponding load causing on the structure so that you are going to calculate so similar manner in the earthquake these waves are going to cause the deformation so deformations are going to induce the loads this shading it's a deformation because of this deformation what you are going to get you are going to get the loads okay so that's what this uh, slide shows in addition to that now whenever you are going to talk this is called a forcing function okay just a, for the thing i will tell you the dynamic equilibrium equation okay so it is called mx2 dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to f of t just it. you know the equation don't uh, get into the details so left hand side okay is going to be the resistance and right hand side is going to be the the force okay so that is the forcing function this force is going to be cast so that is going to be mass times acceleration the uh, the um, uh, damping sides the velocity plus uh, k times the stiffness displacement will give you the the f of t so that is what the dynamic equation of equilibrium ms2 dot plus cx dot plus kx equal to f of t okay now this is because already i told you that because of this force function these structures are going to vibrate because you are going to apply this loading because of this loading your structures are going to vibrate okay this is called because of the force function you have a actuated force that forces are going to cause some vibration so that is going to be called as a force function in addition to that what happened these are called a natural time period of the building it is called natural frequency of the building okay what about the left side side it is going to be a natural frequency of the structure for example what is the natural frequency of the structure you take a structure and then just apply a deformation and then allow it to vibrate so what happened you take a scale you hold it on one side you just give a deformation on the scale what will you what it does it is going to vibrate and then it is going to stop you are at scale and then you just apply a deformation it is going to vibrate and then it is going to stop so if you take a building you just pull the building and then leave it it automatically vibrates and stops 
Okay, so that vibration is called natural frequency of the structure. Okay, so this natural frequency of the structures are very very important because this is natural frequency. Because of this earthquake, you are going to get the operating frequency or the forcing function frequency you are going to get. If these two are coincides, then the building is going to start the continuously vibration. The buildings are going to enormously is going to vibrate. That is called the resonance. Whenever the operating frequency and the natural frequency, if it coincides, then it is going to vibrate, it is going to be enormously, and then that is going to cause the failure of the component or failure of the structures. That is very, very important. Okay. Now, if you look at that, what are the time period for the various building? This is the guidelines is given. Suppose you take a simple residential building, the time period is going to be 0.05 seconds. Okay? You take a small building, vibrate it. If the frequency, what is the time period? Is only not for not five seconds it's going to vibrate. So similarly, for various cases are there. You have elevated tank, four seconds, and then gravity tank is going to be 0.8 seconds, and then suspension is six seconds. So again, reinforce column is similarly two seconds, and multi-story building. Now, if you look at that, 15 stories, that is one second per floor. Suppose if you are having 30 stories, the natural period of, period of the, the particular building is 30 seconds. One second per story. So that is going to be called as the natural frequency of the particular building. And then whenever you have the natural free, uh, frequency, and then because of the earthquake, what you are going to get, you are going to operate the frequency. If the both the frequencies are coincides, then the resonance will occur, the building is going to excessively, it is going to vibrate and then the components or the connections or the structure, it may fail. Next slide please. Now, this is talks about the earthquake intensity and then because of this magnitudes are very very important. Okay. Normally the scales, okay, the earthquakes are measured in two scales. So one scale is not Richter scale. Okay, probably you might have and the newspaper and all you might have uh, heard that the Richter scale 4, 5, probably when tsunami will occur? Above 7, above 7, above 7, tsunami will occur if the earthquake occurs in the under the sea. Okay, if the earthquake occurs under the sea, so the band is 7, there is a tsunami warning. Okay, now you compare. Okay, this Richter scale. So up to three, four are all normal. Okay, three, four, five, up to five is normal. Okay, so what you are going to get? You are going to get the moderate damage if the buildings are designed properly. Okay, don't uh, take it uh, forward that the buildings are properly designed. So if you are having Richter scale four or five, then you will get only a very, very less damage. Okay. If the Richter scales are high, it's going to be pure. heavily it's going to be damaged. So that is with respect to the scale. But with respect to that, okay, so energy release is given here. Energy levels are released here. Okay, it is compared. I, I don't want you to go through all these things. You, you just go through this. The energy release during 2001 Puchi earthquake is about 400 times that they released by the 1945 auto bomb drop on the Hiroshima. So you can compare the Hiroshima bomb, okay, the Americans drop on the you know, Japan. So that is the Hiroshima bomb. You compare that bomb and then that earthquake occurred in 2001 with the earthquake. So that is going to be 400 times more. So the effect is going to be that much time. Okay. So that is the called energy. And then various scale level. So what you are going to get the energy release is shown in the slide. Okay. And then now you can see that earthquake can fit over large areas, although they usually last less than one minute. Okay, less than one minute. That's what it, that is going to be a few seconds only, but maximum it's going to be less than one minute only. And then you are going to have, if you look at the diagram itself, so you are going to have some scales. If you are having two, three, and all, it is going to be comes under minor shaking category. So the four, five, six, and all comes under moderate shaking and then 7 and 8 and all is called as a yeah, strong shaking. Okay. And then if you want to ask, uh, if I want to ask you a question, what is the maximum magnitude so far occurred in the world? Maximum magnitude occurred in the world? 9.6. Huh? 
9.65. No, maximum earthquake magnitude occurred at China, the Richter scale is 12. Maximum magnitude occurred in China, the earthquake magnitude is, the Richter scale magnitude is 12. And you all know that the earthquake occurrence are not predictable. Okay. The earthquake, even people have started, the researchers all over the world are start doing research, okay, on whether we are able to predict it. Okay, only once the people predict that, but uh, most of the times they fail. Okay, so 99 percent they fail in predicting the earthquake. Only once, one, uh, one time they succeed in that prediction also. Okay, probably you may have also you know, heard that some rats are going and hiding in some location. <laughs> okay, so dogs are doing something. So like that, uh, the people may give that they uh, know all these things, but that is all not true. And again, it is not predictable. Okay, so that is very, very important aspect. Now, if you look at that, these are the various category. And then, with respect to the energy release, you have a puja to take mind use for times more than that. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, if you look at that uh, slide, the mini structures, okay, <coughs> failed during the various aspect. Okay, it is not accepted. Okay, whether you have seen the time period for the various buildings. Okay, most of the buildings fail. Okay, for example, you look at the first diagram. Okay, what is the structure? So, building structure. So, whole, whole building collapsed. And then you are going to have the bridge. Bridge collapsed. And then you have a water tank. Water tank collapsed. You have a reservoir. Reservoir collapsed. And then if you are having a steel structure, steel structure collapsed. So, like that, any other building, okay. So, the effect on this type of structure, on industrial structures are very, very critical, okay. Probably, we all know that, after the occurrence of tsunami, okay, the subsequent, uh, what happened, subsequently, after tsunami, okay. So, the important structures are again examined. For example, you have here, the structures. Here, all the nuclear power plant structures, and also you have here, okay, you have um, uh, our uh, IG tower and all is there. The structures, whatever we have, nuclear power plant structure, these structures are again examined. These structures no collapse, but even if some of the structures are facing some minor cracking, okay, crack on the your nuclear containment shell, you have a containment shell where your uh, nuclear things are uh, generated. And then this causes, okay, even the uh, crack is there on the your containment shell, so that is going to harm the people. Okay? Radioactive waste material is going to cause so many problems. So, after the occurrence of this tsunami, I think probably you might have uh, uh, learned uh, through the newspapers that the Russian, we have a collaboration with Russia. Okay? Most of our nuclear structures are designed in collaboration with the Russians. Okay, Russian experts are again, they are invited and then they examined all the things and then congratulated to some of the remedy measures also take. It's not a very serious, but some of the remedy measures also take. Okay, it is not only, no, what I am talking about, it should not, if it is a collapse, there is no, that is a different issue. Even the, if this cracks, okay, whether the structure is good or not, that also you have to be, you have to examine. Okay, so that is very, very important. So if you look at the structure, all the structures are facing, okay, the problem. And then why it is failing? So you know that these are all these structures are not designed for the, the particular level of seismic loading. Why it is failing? This is not designed for the particular level of the seismic loading. Okay, so that is very really important. Next slide, please. Now uh, this slide, okay, the philosophy of the earthquake uh, resident is uh, earthquake res resident design. Now one thing is, why people are not doing the seismic design? Because the load is there, unknown. The magnitude is unknown. And then even based on your own soil, okay, your forces may be increased or it may decrease. 